pleasure and honor for me to kick off the first daily briefing of our constituency. And it's also it's the first time we're having it in a hybrid format, which means we have colleagues joining us uh, in person here in Glasgow, in the Blue Zone at COP26, at the Blue Zone Hall 4C. But we have also our broadcasting at the multi-level action pavilion virtual platform. Um, at the moment, I don't see how many because my colleagues will be telling me. And so um, there will be an opportunity, hopefully, other colleagues joining us. Um, so just a couple of housekeeping uh, rules, first of all. Um, those who have been familiar with those climate conferences every morning, uh, between 8 to 10, the negotiators uh, gather in groups in their caucuses. Um, so this is the moment where they prepare themselves for the negotiation agenda items that each group define their own priorities and then they unite once again at the final level with big, big negotiating groups uh, like EU, like uh, G7 and China. Um, and at 10 o'clock onwards, all the sessions are becoming the official negotiation so that those what has been spoken there are taken as notes. So we as observers are also having our constituency preparatory meetings, daily meetings, in order to define our strategies, in order to define our agendas, how we can engage, uh, what are the key topics that we should have a look at, um, and uh, how to coordinate our delegation, who is engaging in which session, who is able to intervene in which topics, um, and as well as what is the agenda of the day. So this is a typical, uh, which was used to be for a long time, uh, the agenda of our daily briefings. However, we all know the, the COP26 and particularly have been very dynamic. So in, in this sessions of our daily briefings, we will take you through who is who, what is what, um, and, and we will not just limit ourselves to the blue zone, but we will be uh, also talking about other ad activities in the city of Glasgow. We will just go through that again. Um, so let's uh, start gradually, but one other housekeeping rule. Because this is a constituency meeting, there may be participants in the room or in the, on the web now who are not members of constituency. I will tell you who are our members. So in theory, these discussions should not be disclosed outside because that is an internal coordination. Obviously, we're not talking about secrets or, or big, big things, but let's be realistic that this is a, a frank discussion. There may be moments where we could start to criticize or say comments that, that it may not be very, very appropriate in an official settings. So uh, I would like to kindly recommend all our our participants in person and virtually, that this is a, an internal off the record uh, process. Many of those discussions will be available, but the discussions today will have will be a kind of an internal meeting. Uh, we will use this space until 10 a.m. And usually we will have this every morning, uh, except tomorrow. So those who are in, in, in Glasgow, you can also join us in other days as well. So uh, next slide, Joe, if we can go to the next slide. Um, so let's start with who we are and what we are doing, because I don't know, um, of course, I cannot see the, 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 the virtual connections, but um, I see some familiar faces. Um, I was, uh, I know Jan Francois from City of Paris following us for a long time, um, but I don't know, for example, other colleagues, is this your first COP or have you been to COPs before? Um, okay, it's a mix, that's good. So I think it will be good, at least at this session, to recall how did we come to here, who are we, how are we engaging. Uh, Joe, yes, okay, he changed the slide, but I don't see it, of course, so it is this kind of how to navigate uh, in this session. Uh, there's another uh, technical uh, reminder. This session is on the web, it's unfortunately not video, because there is a problem with our cameras, but it is audio, which means people are listening to me, they are seeing the presentation, but they cannot see us in the room. Um, so let's, let's think about the LGMA, uh, the UN Climate Process is famous for abbreviations. So this stands for Local Governments and Municipal Authorities uh, constituency. And, and now I'm informed by my colleague Joe that we have 46 online um, colleagues joining us in the virtual platform. That's, that's at least a good start for a first session. So um, 
what are we doing? We are the official engagement mechanism of local and regional governments to the UNFCC process. And it started in 1995. So this is an important point because it has been, of course, a lot of um, activities over the past couple of years, but we have been part of the process since it was beginning, since it's beginning in 1995. It, it took together with business community and the, the youth, especially the, the Climate Action Network, which is the environmental groups, local governments have been the oldest, the, the one of the oldest three uh, observer constituencies trying to influ influence the process. And um, obviously, over the past 25 years, we are improving and we're advancing, uh, especially in 2013, the, the networks of local engine governments have also been gathered They're under the umbrella of Global Task Force. So LGMA is representing the, the Global Task Force in the climate space. Who we are? We are 30 plus accredited organizations, which are non-profit uh, networks, associations of local energy grams. These could be uh, national associations, these could be global associations. Um, they have to follow uh, procedures of, of the UN bureaucracy. They have to fill in the forms. Um, and obviously there are some limitations that not all of them can be accredited. Therefore, in a, in a broader context, we also are in touch with other networks who do not necessarily are accredited to the UNFCC, but they share, they receive our information um, that they follow what's going on in the climate negotiations. How are we connecting our, our into the process? Uh, in particular, we are focusing on the negotiations. Um, uh, this is important because over the past uh, couple of years, there are a number of multiple processes that evolved. Um, so, LGMA is primarily coordinating the interventions, the submissions, uh, the, the participation to the uh, both the annual conference of parties, as we have seen here, but also throughout the year. There are spatial working groups. Uh, there are technical meetings every year in May, June. So we are also following this. So it's, it's a year long process. Um, it's not just what we see here. Uh, since 95, of course, there has been a number of milestones. Um, obviously, 95 for us was first at the UN, but our first global climate summit of the cities, municipal leader summit was in 93, in fact. So until 2007, it was a bit uh, low profile because the UNFCC and Kyoto Protocol did not have any recognition. So in 2007, in Bali at the Conference of Parties, the, the party decided to come up with a new mechanism, new vision of the climate regime. And we said that this is the moment local governments should come in. The, the mistake of ignoring local energy governments should not be repeated in this third phase. And that was the famous preparations towards Copenhagen summit. Uh, in Copenhagen, it was for us remarkable. We had more than 1,200 delegations. We had a Copenhagen local government climate lounge at the blue zone and we have developed our catalog of commitments um, so all expectation was that there will be a regime designed in Copenhagen however it failed we all know it was a shipwreck um, and the year after we did not give up as local governments we said that multilateralism is important we will continue in the process so we came up to the Cancun COP, COP 16 with our outcome from Mexico City summit at Cancun, we had the, the first mayors and parliamentary uh, parliamentarians and roundtable, and all these interactions have this resulted the first COP decision for local energy governments, which recognized as governmental stakeholders. In 2011, we were in Africa, Durban Adaptation Charter was adopted. This was again a very innovative and um, very forward-looking uh, process uh, that the cities and regions were acknowledging resilience and adaptation at the forefront of their activities. Um, in 2012, obviously, um, uh, Sorry, uh, this, there's a mistake here. 2012 is not the Marrakesh partnership, but 2013, where we had the UNFCC um, Friends of Cities created because it was the Rio Plus 20. We had the experience how we work with the national governments in the negotiations, so elevated our working space. Uh, in Warsaw, we had the first um, Cities Day. We had the first ministerial and mayoral forum, and we have the second COP decision. Again, this was a result of our efforts. There was a workshop uh, and there was a forum after in 2014, there was the UN Climate Summit. Uh, we have created our Compact of Mayors. We have started to develop NASCA, our data under the registry of the UNFCC. In 2015, obviously, we had our Paris Agreement, a recognition, the preambular paragraph. We uh, achieved our result. Uh, we had a fantastic Paris City Hall event. Um, and the Cities and Regions Pavilion was in the green zone. Um, two years later, we were in the Bonn-Fiji process. We have created uh, the 
Talanoa dialogues. In 2018, we had developed our outcomes for the UN Climate Action Summit. Uh, we have at the Heidelberg announced elevation of Friends of Cities to a new phase, which is Friends of Multi-Level Action. Um, and of course, in, in Madrid, we have uh, finalized our roadmap towards uh, Glasgow, which was aiming to be two words, Multi-Level Action Roadmap. Joe, um, um, I know we were planning to have a video of 90 seconds. Is it possible to play it so that at least we give a break? Um, is it technically doable? Mm, okay, we will have the video later on. Actually, Joe is trying. Let's wait. Let's give a couple of minutes. Okay, we have a... Do you hear the audio of the video? Sorry, um, Lars. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you hear the video of the video? The video is not coming. Uh, sorry, audio is not coming. Okay. Now you're coming. Okay. Jan, do you remember these days? <laughs> do you want to remember? <laughs> Perfect. That's one thing that is... <laughs> um, yeah, this was prepared last year in preparation to the fifth anniversary. So we said why Paris Agreement is so important for us. And this 90 seconds is a wrap up of our efforts. I hope for our colleagues in, in the virtual platform, uh, this was just a, 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 a complementing what we have been summarizing in like 30 years of climate advocacy <laughs> in the in the uh, of, of documenting and in the climate space. into the virtual platform my colleagues can help me maybe if they see it so let's continue our our our, our discussions here so in the joe now are we able to go back to the presentation perfect the next slide please perfect so as of today, we are discussing, we are living in a world of hybrid uh, realities, which is virtual and, and different uh, sessions are coming out. So we can summarize that our engagement in this process is in four, let's say, building blocks. One, we are participating in the UN official bodies, negotiations. Second, each presidency have their own agendas. They have the different groups. When they take on the leadership, they introduce some themes, they put their own priorities, and we would like to interact with them. As you have seen in, in, in climate COP in, in every year, there are different discussion topics because presidencies want to put this on the top priority. Then we have high-level climate action champions. This is a legacy of Paris Agreement. They are introducing especially uh, contributions of non-party stakeholders, um, in particular in raising ambition. But over these years, it has evolved so much that it is now opening a new vision of engagement and the announcement is coming up. So this year, here in COP, we will see a new phase of our high-level climate action champions and Marrakesh partnership. This is the, the ones that you have been familiar, race to zero, hundreds and thousands of cities and regions are part of this process, race to resilience. Uh, we have thematic pathways, in uh, particular on human settlements, and there is race to zero breakthroughs. And obviously, uh, these three processes are partially or in, in to a certain extent are controlled or led by UN. Uh, and this means that there are certain things that we have to consider diplomatically in terms of some, some uh, rules and procedures. But the LGMA as a constituency, the summary of that we had done 20 years before, should still continue to be uh, the, the uh, autonomous and, and constituency-based initiatives, outcomes, 
there are cases that it's not always that we agree with everything that has been decided. There are cases that every priority may not be exactly fulfilling our expectations. Therefore, presence of local and regional governments on their own, uh, let's say, mechanisms through their own side events, through their own pavilions, through their own summits is extremely important and this should continue. That's why we would be uh, encouraging our constituency to continue to engage through this collaboration so that we feed in all these uh, processes with our, with our own, uh, let's say, expectations and, and priorities. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, yesterday we had the first, uh, um, not yesterday, actually the day before, um, we had the first press conference uh, and it was the moment where we announced our roadmap uh, that will be beyond Copenhagen, beyond um, Glasgow. And in that sense, we have defined mainly, this is the time for multi-level action. Uh, the, 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 the concept of collaborative work, which was agreed in Paris, is now starting to be implemented. We have seen this in so many countries and we want the COP26 outcomes to embrace the notion as the new normal of the, the Paris Agreement. Um, we would also like to focus our discussions on climate finance, especially localizing global, national and private finance to sustainable urbanization so that we can seize the urban opportunity. We can make sure the cities and regions are receiving the right incentives, the right um, amount of resources that they can then deliver their commitments. Uh, and these two, of course, are related. Multi-level is not just for raising ambition. Our commitments is also depending on the existing and availability of new resources. Of these challenges, it is very clear we cannot manage or just reach those targets with only municipal budgets, which is limited in terms of its capacity, especially with the COVID-19, the, the, the municipal income is significantly shrink. So we should be focusing all these fossil fuel divestments, all these new financing announcements should come to the sustainable urbanization, both in the global north and the global south, in fact. Um, just just climate action is a, a topic that we would like every municipal collaboration should be taking on. It's not just mitigation and adaptation. It is it is gender, it is culture, it is youth, it is food, waste, biodiversity. So that this is an action agenda that encompasses all. And finally, as you have seen, the process is increasing. There are new and new bodies created and everybody wants to have cities and regions speaking in their events. They want to have input from our side. So we have to be more professional as a constituency. We have to be much more coordinated. We have to be much more robust. Uh, and that is our mission. That is our homework that from Glasgow onwards, we have to be much more actively engaged in the process. So this was announced as a press conference. Um, um, next slide, please. Um, now, the press conference was uh, is available at the moment on the UNFCC homepage, and the text is also available on our citiesandregions.org. Um, so this is at least giving us the hope that the world leaders, when they came yesterday, were briefed about our priorities so that the rest of the process can be rolled out, at least with our inputs as well. This slide you see is uh, an important slide that we are sharing with all of you. It is a very um, back of the envelope analysis about what has happened over these years. It is true that the ambition is still not there. Yesterday from the First Minister of Scotland, we also heard that yes, uh, even the local and regional government's ambitions are not enough. But what has happened with the national governments? We have seen, and that's what we were saying, that the success of COP depends on your delivery of national climate frameworks at home. So every nation should bring new climate plans. If we see the 120 plus um, submissions, the new climate plans, around 60 to 80, let's say 80, are those who have raised ambition, their climate ambition. And uh, if we look at those 80, we have found around 60 from global north to global south have raised their ambition because or thanks to their collaboration with their local and regional governments. This is a particular information that we are trying to say that be it in the US, be it in Japan, Dominican Republic, Rwanda, Morocco, Canada, EU, all these countries have one thing in common. 
if you look at their NDCs, if you look at their preparations, they have in a different variety. Some are some are weak, some are strong, some are top down, some are bottom bottom up. But they have a, some sort of a multi level collaboration. And if we can strengthen this, if we can make this by every nation, we could be much more confident that the ambition that is needed can be much more easily developed and taken up higher. The next slide um, is, yes, this is our priority, but what will we do now? What, are, what is our agenda in 12 days here in, 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 in Glasgow? Where already three days are gone. So it's a complex, um, the, we always encourage ourselves that we have to first be aware that there are different worlds. Uh, there's a world inside this blue zone, which is restricted to those who have uh, badges. These are the badges either by the national government. We have several national governments who have opened their spaces for their local engine governments. This is the case in Canada, in France, in Brazil, in the US. Uh, but we also have the networks of local governments who are accredited that they can also register their political leaders or staff of their uh, local and regional governments to the process. Those who are the ones, these badges daily or weekly can come to these spaces and interact mainly, first of all, our home, this, uh, the base of base camp, let's say, is the pavil pavilion we call it as multi-level action pavilion, but it is not the only space we have. There are in particular negotiation rooms, there are side events, the ones that are hosted by UNFCC so that we can interact. Interact. There are other blue zone pavilions that, that are hosting, welcoming. I just across, I see the Korean pavilion. We have um, nature pavilion. We have Japan pavilion, US pavilion. Uh, these are the processes. The events are not uh, official UNFCC agendas, but these are the moments where we interact with other stakeholders and, and, and make our announcements and uh, develop our proposals and share our outcomes with the parties so that they are better informed about cities and regions, how they act on climate. Then there's another space, the green zone. The green zone is in fact anywhere that you can access without necessarily a UNFCC accreditation. So in the case of, um, for example, Glasgow, anybody who has a visa to uh, to UK, if they can pick up a flight, if they come to Glasgow, they can go through the city of Glasgow, they can go to the hotels, universities, city chamber, and you would see that numerous and hundreds and thousands of events are taking place in the city. And there are so many of our members also taking part in that. Even in Edinburgh, in, in the rest of the Glasgow, Scotland, we have other events. It's a complex area. What we now know as of today, in these two weeks, we are prepared to welcome more than 400 leaders or staff of local engine companies across the world. And around 200 events are taking place inside the blue zone and outside the blue zone. And obviously, especially through hybrid mechanisms, we want to make sure those who cannot make it here because of a variety of reasons can be part of this process so that we are inclusive as possible. Next slide, please. So the space we are here, our colleagues in the virtual uh, platform cannot see it now, but yesterday they were able to watch uh, four hours of a fantastic uh, high level dialogues under the Time for Multi-Level brand, uh, Time for Multi-Level Action brand. Uh, and and uh, today we will also continue. So until 13th, until 12th of November, this space will have uh, the, 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 the most intense number of interactions of the local governments with their partners. This space is developed, uh, hosted in particularly by Scottish government, which we are grateful uh, with their political, technical, financial contributions. Without their hosting, without their welcoming, without their support, this space wouldn't be possible. Obviously, ICLE is here for the in its capacity as the focal point to convene this space manage it um, time-wise, but also sp space-wise, uh, communication-wise, but we are not alone. We have co-hosts, the Welsh government, Glasgow City Council, Urban Let's Project, and Daring Cities of Bonn. We have contributing partners. I will not like to count all of these because then it will be a long list. We have around 30 partners whose logos are here or, or, or involved somehow. Uh, they have contributed both technically in developing the agenda, but also in some cases financially. So this is a collective crowdsourced space of local and regional governments. This is our home and this is the place where we can speak as we wish and as we can uh, convey our messages 
freely um, and then feed into the rest of the negotiations as appropriate. So we are grateful to Scottish government, all the partners on, and co-hosts to make this space a reality. Again, in the citiesandregions.org, if you go to register yourself, you can watch all the sessions uh, online. There's another source of information. We are grateful for the collaboration we have developed with the Earth Negotiation Bulletin, and they are covering uh, this space every day that uh, out of the space we have um, one event per day that will be covered by the, the earth negotiation bulletin and this will be also available publicly and you could then uh, watch and share as well next slide please so what are we doing here and the pavilion. We did not want to isolate ourselves. We did not want to uh, think out of the box of our discussions. We followed the themes that are defined by the presidency, the COP26 president, which is the UK government. Of course, this is a new style. They, for every day, they have defined the topic. Let's remember, in the past, uh, we had this action agendas of high-level champions, which was restricted to several days, like the second, first week, and end of first week, or beginning of second week. Now, from day one, we have a discussion on all these themes. And it, if you look at the topics, uh, finance, energy, youth, um, adaptation, gender, transport, cities and regions, it's an agenda that we as local energy groups have something to say in all of them. Um, obviously, because presidency have their own priorities, there are cases that not all the details or not all the topics are the ones that we would like to discuss. So we designed in our sessions that those topics plus the ones that we want to see hear, hear more could also be discussed in our space. For example, when it comes to finance, it is not how much money will be available, how much money will be spent to sustainable urbanization. When it comes to to, to, to youth and public environment, it is not just the, the, the inter, uh, it is not just public and participation, but intergenerational justice, equity, the cultural element or the future of the, the new world that we will be building should be all part of the discussion. When it comes to nature, we will also like to discuss food and health. Uh, on where it comes to transport, it is not just electrical vehicles, it is sustainable mobility, how we, how we move in our cities uh, through non-motorized mechanisms as well or when it comes to adaptation, loss and damage, we also want to address urban poor, informal settlements and migration. So we are very happy. We have a full agenda of 70 sessions across to two weeks and uh, you will be more than welcome to join this online, most of them, except it is not defined otherwise. And they will also be available on the uh, recordings for those who are in the registration of the platform. Next slide, please. We are almost coming to the end. You can take a snapshot of this QR code so that if you want to see the, the, the um, full agenda, which is a PDF document, so that then you can track uh, which type of, uh, which, which sessions that you will follow. Um, next slide, please. So now, um, we are in the blue zone. This is a photo that you would notice for those who have been in the past. Uh, now in this first two days, we're in the World Leaders Days, World Leaders Summit, which has spatial restrictions in terms of which part of the blue zone we can enter as observers. Uh, it's not just entering to the corridors, even entering to the rooms, entering to the plenaries is extremely restricted because of security, but also because of um, hygiene and COVID-19 measures in order to secure the, the self safety and health. But also there are sessions that are, are limited to leaders only. So this, this chart shows you the type of badges that we as constituency have to keep daily track so that we are able to access into the rooms as appropriate. Uh, we do not miss the opportunity not to be visible, but we also have to be able to, to know that those who have those who do not have these badges are not able to enter specific uh, zones. This is particularly the, the zones E and F, the, the negotiation areas, uh, especially when uh, high-level sessions are taking place. So some of these badges will not be needed 
in the rest of the weeks. Uh, but obviously, it is um, something that we have to coordinate. That's why daily briefings here is important so that we can share our, our, our discussions and then we can define who would get the badge and who would attend which sessions. Next, please. So um, we're getting closer. Now I would like to go day by day, what are the highlights? I will not go to full two weeks here because it will take a long time, but I just want to recall ourselves what has happened in the past three days or two days and what will happen today. Uh, on October Sunday, uh, this pavilions and side events were all closed. There were only negotiations, but we reserved uh, the press conference room for Reserve for NGOs and we had our half an hour press uh, conference. This was particularly important because 31st of October was the World Cities Day. We said that World Cities Day and starting the COP is a fantastic opportunity to highlight that it is not just opening at two weeks. It is not a traditional World Cities Day. In fact, for us, this World Cities Day is opening a new era. We are opening a new era of multi-level collaboration. And that's why we were so excited to, to make our voices heard. Our press conference was truly reflecting the spirit of time for multi-level. We had uh, UN Habitat, uh, the, the, the custodian of the UN uh, World Cities Day. We had three leaders from three different uh, jurisdictions. We have the council leader of uh, Glasgow. We had uh, Sao Paulo governor, and we have the mayor of Des Moines and president of ICLE, then followed by minister of environment of Japan representative, which shows this, that it is a collective effort of different levels of government and UN institutions, and the, the messages that to seize the potential of urban climate action and local and regional governments so that we can be much more ambitious in terms of our actions. Um, in the afternoon, in the evening, actually, it was scheduled originally for three o'clock, then it has been extended to six and the, the full delivery was around eight. Uh, Mayor um, Tito Nasru, Nasri, Tito Asfura, uh, Mayor of Tegucigalpa, capital city of Honduras, he delivered uh, the statement of LGMA, local governments and municipal authorities constituency at the plenary, which is also webcasted. The recording is also available. We have just noticed one, um, an important, but uh, sad, um, case that has happened uh, because uh, these statements, especially when it is in the plenary, should not exceed two minutes. Unfortunately, there was a misunderstanding and unfortunately, our dear leader, Mayor Asfura, have extended his time space, which um, probably because it was the first speaker and because he was a very uh, passionate political leader, the chair of the session did not stop him, but we have to be aware that this will not be happening again. Uh, and any, any not just uh, LGMA, any observers who are exceeding their two minutes, they should be uh, first warned, then their microphone will be cut off. So it's not nice, neither to the Secretariat, nor to the UNFCC parties, nor to the other stakeholders that we occupy the space so long. So we have to respect and we have to follow the procedures. That is the principle of multilateralism, the rules is opening us the space for all of us. It's not good that one speaker occupies the most of the time and the others are not able to speak. So that we have to address. We have expressed our apologies to the Secretariat and, and we are confident that we will, this will not be happening again. Uh, and we are aware that sometimes this kind of uh, cases can happen, but that's what we have to be together so that we, we, we prevent such, let's say, small road accidents on the way forward. Um, on Monday, which was yesterday, um, let's go to the next slide. Okay, um, we had the, on the blue zone, oh, this is forgotten here, but like I can put it, it was the World Leaders Summit. Um, Pavilion started to have their events and we had opened our session here in the, in the blue zone. Um, in the green zone, we do not uh, have too much things still. Uh, and let's finish our today's briefing in the sense that we go through the agenda of today. Um, today, we have a full agenda. I will not go to details, but I can encourage you at 11.30, there will be a very interesting session by Scottish government on women's leadership. There will be a number of heads of state, a number of political leaders from local energy governments. So it will be very exciting, we believe. 
Uh, so you're more than welcome to join that one. But other sessions, we have um, dialogues on Latin America. We have uh, Mannheim, uh, city of Mannheim, uh, discussing on local green deals. Uh, we will have launch of the uh, subnational fund uh, by uh, by by uh, our colleagues from CC35. We will have C40 presenting Race to Zero. And in the evening at 6.30, we will have the time for multi-level dialogues uh, for US. Uh, our colleagues in the United States will be joining us. Um, in the other pavilions, we have another partner of the LGMA Climate Heritage Network launching their Race to Resilience. Um, uh, in Japan Pavilion, in German Pavilion, in the US Center, we have a number of sessions where particular sessions are designed by local Indian governments or ministries of environment. For example, Vice, Vice Minister of Japan will be opening the event in the Japan Pavilion. At the German side event, uh, we will be meeting with Mayor of Mannheim and, and other leaders from, from Germany and globally. At the US Center, Gina McCarthy will be meeting with the US leaders, governors and mayors. Um, and in other processes, cities uh, for forest and double arrival have a nature for cities and forest for cities session. In the Green Zone Cities Alliance, uh, another colleague, uh, partner of our uh, constituency, uh, will have their session on urban equity. Uh, and in Glasgow uh, City Chambers, uh, there will be uh, an event of C40 on um, Race to Zero and other, other topics. Um, but more for me, today's most important interesting event will be, or had been, <laughs> because it was a morning breakfast, um, the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson and the Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon jointly invited heads of governments and mayors and local leaders, subnational leaders to a breakfast. Um, you can all imagine uh, this kind of uh, domestic uh, collaboration is always a bit challenging in a, this kind of uh, national and global settings. But I think this was a very nice reflection that climate is an agenda that unites everyone. So we were very happy to see jointly devolved administration leaders in the UK government is scheduling this uh, dialogue. We will be eager to hear how the atmosphere was inside. We know several leaders that ICLE president and others have been invited. So I think this is also a good start uh, to show that we are united in this process. During the World Leaders Summit inside the Blue Zone, there will be several side events. We are hearing that there will be local leaders speaking there, but we don't know the full list uh, because we were not involved in the design of these sessions. So I think it will be a good surprise to see who will be speaking and how they are engaged. But um, let me tell you once again, in Paris, for example, when leaders were in the blue zone, we were not allowed to step in, in even into the green zone. So in fact, there is progress. We are at least able to interact in a different level. It could have been better, but we are also seeing that we are on the right track for making progress. We hope more inclusiveness and more co um, collaboration in the future. I, I think I will conclude because this room will also be used for uh, the next session at 10 a.m., which will not be webcasted, but it will be a closed session. Um, I would encourage um, us um, to, if there are any questions, especially first of all from the floor in, 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 in Glasgow, now in, from the audience, our colleagues, uh, but if there are any, any participants from the virtual platform raising any issues, I'm not sure whether we can act access to this at this stage i think we would not be able to respond but maybe in the next sessions we could be much better prepared because as we said this is our first hybrid event we simply forgot how it will be having we, we, we couldn't immediately foresee the challenges um we are very good in physical event organization we are very good in virtual organizations over the past two years, hundreds of people joining our Zoom or other platforms, but having both at the same time was a bit challenge, uh, but I, I truly appreciate all your efforts. What I see, by the way, uh, we have one of our leaders, Mayor of Mannheim, Peter Kurtz, is already arrived. David, um, welcome. David doesn't hear us. Um, Mayor Kurtz, it's a great pleasure and honor to see you joining us. Welcome. You just, I think, stepped down from the airport and it just walked through the to, to the blue zone. Um, we just finished our first daily briefing. Actually, you can put on the headset and you can hear me better. Um, this is a, both an in-person and a virtual session. So if you like, we will have like 10 more minutes for discussions. 
uh, this can be an opportunity. If you would like, you can also uh, welcome our colleagues. Um, uh, but we would like to, first of all, thank your leadership uh, as Mayor of Mannheim, Chair of Global Parliament of Mayors, uh, but also as one of the partners of the Pavilion, Multi-Level Action Pavilion, this afternoon we will be welcoming uh, your session uh, on local green deals. Uh, so it's a great pleasure and, and honor. So we look forward to your leadership. Um, as I said, if you'd like to intervene, this is also floor is an internal decision making but also exchange of information we would be more than happy to welcome you if you want i can give you the floor the microphone so that you can address as well unfortunately the cameras are not working but visually they can hear and they can see the screen no 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 urgency okay um Questions, answer, additional contributions, any missing topics? Makers, if you like, you can shortly introduce, announce your event in the afternoon. I would be honored to share the, the podium with you. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Yeah, th thank you. Thank you so much and, and for hosting uh, our, our event. Uh, it's a joint event with uh, ECLE and we want to present uh, our so-called local Green Deal. So we took the European Green Deal as a blueprint and we had the European ECLE conference last year and we adopted the Mannheim message uh, which uh, basically refer to the European Green Deal and uh, trying to uh, ally with the European Commission and to make clear uh, that uh, the European Green Deals have, uh, have to be, uh, has to be localized. And so we developed uh, a concept how to do this in, in Mannheim. And uh, so it's a kind of a governance innovation uh, because it's a broader approach than just to focus on reducing uh, carbon emissions and of course to invite all the stakeholders in our city and of course in the end we want to achieve that there is a kind of a, a, a contract or a, a compact between the European Union, the national level and the local level. And I think this is uh, um, truly important. Uh, Mayor Kurtz, I think this was good that you have uh, highlighted this before. I will just one more question. Joe, can I go back to our original slide with the pavilion partners because I want to have the logo of Mayor of uh, City of Mannheim, Stadt Mannheim in our screen and David could have our photo with this uh, as well. Um, just come back. Yes, perfect. Here you are, Mayor. Stadt Mannheim. Um, so, Mayor, I think, first of all, this event is at 3 p.m. at this pavilion, and it is also uh, hybrid again. It will be broadcasted globally, um, and we will be conveying this message about the experience of the local governments, pioneering local governments like you, contributing to European uh, process, so that it can also be even inspi inspiration for other countries, other regions in the world. Um, that is exactly fulfilling our message, time for multi-level action, so that it is not uh, wait and see, but do it together. Uh, and if we do it together, it will be more successful. I think that is perfectly fitting to our discussions. Uh, just an additional note, on the 12th of November, the Committee of the Regions, which you are also chairing the working group, uh, they will have their conference in Brussels, and there will be a connection from that conference to Glasgow, so that the discussion, the findings that you have shared here will also be communicated, so that these discussions are feeding to one step to the other. It, it is, it's a process, um, so therefore we would be eager to, to hear your results. Um, maybe one last comment uh, we can ask you um uh, how do you want to because glasgow is not the end it's just a, in one step further how exactly you want to do this in mannheim if you can give one example like a teaser the the details you can share in the session but maybe one example of how you are concretely delivering this local green deals in mannheim so that this this could be inspiration for others to join once again at 3 p.m today 
Yes, we, we are uh, taking uh, stock of what is being done in our uh, city and we, we are uh, identifying gaps. Uh, so we identified around more uh, within half a year, 150 possible deals which we uh, could make with partners in the city with private sectors uh, and so on and also with our uh, city council mm -hmm. uh, and and so uh, the let's say most important deal will be uh, the decarbonization mm -hmm. of our district heating system which serves around uh, 60 percent of our apartments and uh, to decarbonize it within this uh, decade mm -hmm. uh, will be a huge task and it's the prerequisite to switch off our 2000 megawatt coal-fired power plant. So this will be a really major contribution, not only for our city. This was exactly the, the challenges of the, the nations here, how to bring the policies to direct actions. And I think your case and, and many others will be showing that if you want to reach to the communities, the local leadership, their vision, their plans are the right process so that they can bring in. And I think one of the reasons why Mannheim is pioneering in this space is that you are the first German city who has developed a voluntary local review just a couple of years ago so that you have a encompassing vision of urbanization and how it integrates with social and economical perspectives. And that is why now climate and sustainability is much more hand in hand. I think I'm sure you have benefited a lot with your this holistic vision in your you know success in all areas, I guess. So congratulations, Mayor, uh, Mayor Kurtz. Um, once again, uh, Mayor Peter Kurtz uh, will be uh, convening this uh, session on local green, localizing green deals at 3 p.m. today at the Multi-Level Action Pavilion, one of the most exciting sessions. Um, and uh, we will be looking forward to welcoming you all. Um, Mayor Kurtz, I know you will be uh, at interacting with a number of other agendas. So thanks a lot for passing by. And I think um, we would be much more powered with your contribution and leadership. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. So I think we should come to a close of this session because as we said, this is a hybrid and but also COVID restricted, uh, uh, let's say, uh, sessions here. So we have to have some cleaning, uh, some 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 uh, refreshment of the devices. Uh, therefore, I'd like to now uh, thank you all for your interest, for those who joined remotely, but also our colleagues who have joined us in, in person in, in, in Glasgow. Um, to recall, this session will be continuing uh, starting from Thursday onwards. Uh, tomorrow at 8.30, we have an East Asia session here. Therefore, our uh, coordination meeting will not take place. But we will continue to keep each other on social media, sorry, networking groups and our WhatsApp group, but also mailing groups. Um, so we will connect that. Uh, and I thank you all our colleagues in the technical team who have managed this possible. Uh, and once again, uh, warm thanks to Scottish government as the host of this process. Thank you. Here. Therefore, our uh, coordination meeting will not take place, but we will continue to keep each other on social media, sorry, networking groups and our WhatsApp group, but also mailing groups. Um, so we will connect that. Uh, and I thank you all our colleagues in the technical team who have managed this possible. Uh, and once again, a warm thanks to Scottish government as the host of this process. Thank you. <laughs>